Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's ICU, and today Apple has released iOS 13.6 to the general public, which adds digital car key support and a number of other new features. And today we're going to talk about jailbreaking, and I'm going to show you exactly how to jailbreak on an older device, being an iPhone 10 or below. And we're also going to briefly touch on newer devices and whether they can jailbreak, and also where you need to go to check the status literally at any point as to whether there is a new jailbreak available for the latest firmwares. All right, so as I mentioned, older devices being the iPhone 10 and below can jailbreak. Definitely be sure to stick around timestamps for that down below in the description. But what about newer devices, those powered by Apple's A12 and A13 CPUs? Well, definitely visit jailbreakcheck.com inside your browser of choice because there you're going to get a full jailbreak status for the latest firmwares, not just iOS 13.6, but also iOS 14. This URL is dynamic, not standard static, which means that it does change and it is updated containing the latest jailbreak status. So as you can see now, when we scroll down to the bottom for iOS 13.6 and 13.5.1, there is not currently a jailbreak available for the newest devices. That is of course, because the uncovered jailbreak was patched with the release of iOS 13.5.1 and with iOS 14 so close, literally looming on the horizon now slated for release later this fall. Jailbreak developers are likely going to target that instead of one of the leader iOS 13 firmwares being 13.5.1 or 13.6. Having said that, things could always change and potentially new kernel vulnerabilities could be patched in either 13.6 or future iterations of iOS 13 prior to iOS 14's release that may inevitably result in a jailbreak. So long story short, just click that subscribe button, ding that notification bell. We'll let you know the second anything changes and if we release receive a new jailbreak. And actually after recording, we did notice that Apple patched several kernel vulnerabilities in iOS 13.6. And what that basically means is that these vulnerabilities exist in 13.5.1 and below. So it's recommended that you do not update to iOS 13.6 because potentially these vulnerabilities could be exploited and they may result in a jailbreak on iOS 13.5.1. Again, no promises there, but it is definitely possible. Work with have to be put in and it's unsure whether security researchers and developers want to put in that extra effort with iOS 14 so close. But if you're already locked out of jailbreaking on 13.5.1, just do not update to iOS 13.6. It is as simple as that. Just stay tuned. We'll let you know. Again, the situation is dynamic, never static. Like I said, that means things could change in the future and potentially you may be able to update to 13.6 and jailbreak. But as of now, your best bet is looking like it's going to be 13.5. 5.1, or of course, below if you're on 13.5, you are in the free and clear and definitely do not update. So yeah, guys, this is something pretty cool. This is just Apple's security update page for iOS 13.6. I'll have this linked below if you want to take a look, but these are the vulnerabilities that are patched inside of iOS 13.6, meaning they exist 13.5.1 and earlier. Okay, so what about older devices? What about jailbreaking today on iOS 13.6 right now? As I mentioned, those with 811 CPUs and below can jailbreak with the limitations involved with the check rain jailbreak, which we're going to go over right now, and I'm going to show you how to jailbreak with check rain. Basically, first and foremost, device support. So newer devices like the iPhone XS slash XR series up to the iPhone 11 will not be able to jailbreak with this method. It's also tethered or semi-tethered, which means that if you want to use your quote jailbreak stuff, so to speak, you actually have to plug into a computer and use said computer to boot tethered. You'll still be able to use everything else, however, but if you want to use your jailbreak stuff, you got to boot tethered. And uh, the next point is you definitely need a computer and not only just a computer, you need a Mac if you want to use the official check rain. However, there is a Windows alternative that we actually have done a tutorial on. The steps are exactly the same as what I'm showing you guys now. There's just a little bit of a workaround that you have to go through with a utility dubbed boot rain. So definitely check out this tutorial. It will be in your cards now as well as down below in the description. But essentially, this will walk you through how to use check rain on a Windows based PC by essentially installing a distribution of Linux that has check rain for Linux. 
So with that said, if you want to proceed and you're familiar with all of the caveats, then just navigate to this article right here, very first link down below in the description. And you're just going to scroll down after having read through it and understanding what you're about to do. Just click on this big green check green button. You will then be redirected. Best Tech Info will gather all of the necessary links. And once it has them, you'll be redirected for a final time. Now you're really only looking for one thing here, but I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. It definitely helps out the channel. But like I mentioned, you just want one thing. So just click right where it says click here and you'll be redirected to the official check range site. You can either scroll down or click get the beta now. It's the same thing. And then just click on download for Mac OS. And once you have check rain downloaded, you're just going to open or mount the .dmg or disk image file. And once it's mounted, it should just look like this right here. It's just this little pop-up. We're going to center this and we're going to drag it over inside of our applications folder. Now, if you already have check rain installed on your computer, you're going to be asked to replace it either stop the operation or keep both. You always want to click on replace if you have this. If you've never used Chakrain before, do not worry about this step, but I'm just clicking on replace right now. We can close out of this finder window, and now I want you guys to just launch up Chakrain. You will receive this message right here the first time. It says Chakrain cannot be opened because the developer cannot be verified. This is fine. This is just a security measure put in place by Apple. You get two options, either move to trash or cancel. We're clicking on cancel. Now to bypass this, you need to launch up system preferences and inside of system preferences, I want you guys to go to security and privacy and then click right where it says open anyway. At the bottom, you can see it says check ring was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer. Now, if you do not see this message and you don't have open anyway, that's because you didn't attempt to launch check ring. So you will have to try to launch it from either the applications folder or from Finder. So let's go ahead and just click on open right there and then open again to the pop up. And one last time, we do need to just launch up Chakrain. And you can see right here, now we have Chakrain open and up on our Mac. Now we can go ahead and connect our device to our computer via a standard USB cable. So I'm doing that right now. It is connected. And if this is the first time connecting your device to your computer, you're going to have to trust or verify the connection. You're going to just navigate to your device. As you can see, mine's right here in the left sidebar. And I'm going to click on trust. And then on the device itself, you will receive a similar pop-up. You need to tap on trust and then input your device's passcode. And once you have done that, then the connection will be established and you can proceed. I also do recommend creating a backup if you have not done so. Chakrain will probably not do anything negative to your device and you'll have no negative ramifications. However, it's better safe than sorry to just backup. Chakrain really does take all of the measures to preserve the data on your device, but it's always a good idea to create a backup or at least maintain a fresh backup if you're not in the habit of doing so already. Okay, so I'm not going to backup now. I don't need it. I'm going to click on the X right here. And as you can see, it says, sorry, iPhone 10 global is supported, but iOS 13.6 is not supported. Versions are 12.3 through 13.5. Now, if you're watching this video at a later date, you might not have to do this because Checkrain will inevitably be updated to include official support for iOS 13.6. But as of now, that new version has yet to be released. So if you're watching this at a later point, you might just have the option to click on start. Or if there's even a firmware pattern past iOS 13.6, you might receive a similar message for that future firmware. But at any rate, today we're clicking on options right here, and we're also ticking off this ability right here to allow untested iOS, iPadOS, tvOS versions. So now we can click on back and we can click on start. And we just received this little pop-up letting us know that it hasn't been tested by the official check rain team. That's okay. That's because remember this exploit does persist through firmware updates. It's something Apple cannot patch because it's a flaw in the silicon of the actual chip that powers these iPhones or these iOS devices themselves. So we can click okay to that pop-up. It's going to tell us that we need to put our device into DFU mode. After we click on next, it's going to send it into recovery mode. And once it is inside of recovery mode, it will just detect that inside of check grain. It just takes a second or two. And now that we're inside of recovery mode, we can start entering DFU mode. Now, 
familiarize yourselves with these steps ahead of time. They're grayed out right now because we haven't clicked on start to initiate the countdown timer. It's very simple on iPhone 10 and 8 style devices. Basically, you just need to hold down the side and volume down buttons together for a couple of seconds, release the side button and continue holding volume down. If you have an even older device, the steps for entering DFU mode will be listed here. So just refer to them. I'm going to click on start and I'm going to hold down these buttons together. I've always found that releasing the side button a little bit early ahead of what it actually says to do inside of the countdown timer interface and check rain always works for me. Your mileage may vary, but as you can see, we are actually inside of DFU mode right now on the device, and it's just going through the exploitation process right now. So it's literally exploiting the boot ROM and jailbreaking this iPhone 10 on iOS 13.6, the latest public firmware as of recording this video. And I also definitely noticed I do need to take a microfiber to my screen next time before I begin. So sorry about that, guys. But at any rate, you're here to jailbreak, and that is exactly what we just did right now. You can see we have a new application on our springboard here on a blank space check rain. Now, in order to open this and use this, you do need an active internet connection. So I do have Wi-Fi connected right now, and we can go ahead and tap on check rain followed by tapping on Cydia, followed by install Cydia. It's going to download the base system, go out, gather all of the components, and install Cydia on your device. Then CheckRain will crash, but don't worry. You now have Cydia on your device. As you can see, we have Cydia right here. So let's just go ahead and tap into it, and it's going to load up. Guys, we are fully jailbroken now, but you're not done just yet. If you receive any sort of pop-up like this stating that you have any upgrades, definitely go through a complete upgrade. You'll have a few options there, but do the complete upgrade, trust me. And it's going to go through, download all of the packages. This is proof. You can see Cydia does work. We're going to restart the springboard now, and it's going to come back up. We're going to swipe over, launch up City again. And I want to just show you guys some identifying text at the bottom of City real quick. So let's scroll down and right down below at the bottom there, you'll see it confirms this is an iPhone 10 comma three or the global iPhone 10 model running iOS 13.6 with the latest build of City. Guys, how absolutely epic is this? We're fully jailbroken right now. I couldn't be more stoked. I hope you are as well. And uh, like I said, we're still not done yet. If you need to reboot your device, what I mean by that is if your device actually powers off, so you have to either reboot it for whatever reason or say it dies in order to use anything that you obtain via Cydia, once your device comes back up and you've rebooted, you're going to have to plug your device into your computer and rerun through that jailbreak procedure inside of CheckGrain. Just go through the exact same steps we just did and your device will boot tethered and you'll be able to open up Cydia once again. But if you don't do that, Cydia will just crash. You won't have any of your tweaks. You won't be able to use any of the apps you downloaded through Cydia. I just want to let you guys know that in advance. And if at this point you're wondering, well, what do I do now? What do I install from Cydia? We've released so many videos recently for iOS 13.5 and heck, even 13.5.1 and tweaks that you can install right now. And the majority of those tweaks will work on iOS 13.6. So check out our top tweaks coverage. I will have a couple of links in your cards as well as down below in the description. And uh, yeah, guys, that's everything I wanted to talk about related to jailbreaking in today's video for iOS 13.6. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Thank you.